Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. Are you happy to be in his presence? Look at your neighbor. Mwambie ni wakati wa kusifu. We are here to celebrate the doings of the Lord. He has been faithful. It is the month of April. We have seen God. So as we wo- as we praise him, praise him with an understanding that amekuwa mwema, si ndio? Okay, clap your hands. Oh 
be the one leading the praise and, and, and that is one of them that I will do we want to you, you know the way people are looking at me is as if I cannot do it you want me to do it, dare yes. me yes. it's because we have a guest and we want to give him ample time <laughs> to be able to minister to us Let's celebrate our worship team in a great way. I love the confidence and uh, it is powerful and God will continue to raise them up and to grace them more and more. That they continue to be a blessing to us and to bring glory to God in Jesus name so this is the day that the Lord has made uh, we have been waiting for this day and it is finally here finally finally here uh, I am very prepared to receive you know I have emptied myself from many things so that there is space for what God has for me and, and I've been praying to God that this today, tomorrow, and Tuesday will bring a mega transformation in our lives that no devil will be able to erase. Maybe some people didn't know we'll be having another service tomorrow at 5 p.m. Monday and Tuesday another 5 p.m. And the man of God, Apostle Peter Semei from Uganda, will be ministering today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So, one of the things that I love about my friend, Apostle Peter Semei, is because he is a man of the word. He has no funny things. He only knows the word. And, and this is what we need in the days we are living in. We need the word. Hatutaki Sarakasi. We need the word of God because it is the word that transforms the lives of men. And I promise you that these three days, you will hear the word. You will hear the word. And you will hear God ministering to your life. Sir, we want you to know that we appreciate that you have found time to come to us. You know, when I was discussing with him, he said he only want to, he was only coming for three meetings. Three meetings this time. And he finished in Deliverance uh, a Church uh, near the, the, the airport. And then he said he has to be with us. Then I am, we are trying to see where else he will go because we will not allow him to go everywhere. So next week we will see after us where he is going, then he was going back home to his family. But he said he must be together with us. There are other things that I will mention to you later on when they are finalized. And God will bless us. This man, I honor him. He is a man of God. He is a man of the word. And I believe that God has sent him with a word for each one of us so that our lives may become better. And sir, as you come to this altar, I give you freedom. Whatever the Lord will allow you to speak, go ahead and speak it. We are ready, these people are ready, I am also ready as the, as the pastor of this house, and God will use you in a great way. And I want to connect the grace that you carry with the grace of this altar, then there will be mega things that will take place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Apostle Simei is all the way from Kampara, Uganda. He was here, uh, I think it's last year, uh, in the month of March. It was, in the, it was also in the month of March. He did our first service, but today he is doing the first service, the second service, and tomorrow and Tuesday. So, Sir, feel welcome. This is your home. 
and you have no whenever you come to Kenya this is your home and these people should know that this is your home it is not where you are going the other side it is here so help me by putting your hands together and celebrating the Lord to bring the man of God to come and minister to us apostle you are most welcome and minister to us amen Let's clap our hands to Jesus. God bless you. It's a blessing to be back home. It's not my first time in this place. I'm so excited. And uh, in these few days that I'm going to be here, your life will go to the next level. I want to appreciate God so much for uh, Bishop uh, Joe Kuria. He's the wonderful man of God. He's a, he's a father. I honor him so much. He's, if, if you talk about men of God that I honor, he's number one. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you people are privileged to be under him as your pastor. Because you cannot find this kind anywhere. Go anywhere. You can't find this kind. This kind is only God who has ordained for your life. So the only thing you have to do is to connect with the grace and uh, believe that God has designed him for your life, and everything he speaks into your life, it must change your destiny. Amen. Let's celebrate the grace of God upon Bishop Kura. We love you, sir. We honor you, and I want to know that me and my family, we celebrate you. You are, you are, you are the best pastor that I've met. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. I want to appreciate God for our mama. Hey, mama is a wonderful... Let me tell you, I love mama here. She's such a wonderful mother. And uh, she has a wide heart. Amazing woman of God. If you are clapping, you better clap it. Better. So God bless you, mama. I celebrate you. You are a blessing to us and to many people there. And because of you, that's why uh, this ministry is standing. Because you are the pillar. Before all these people came... You've been there standing. Let's celebrate again in Jesus' name. So lift up your hands and say, Jesus, speak to me. Uh, Bishop, before I preach, uh, the Lord spoke to me that this week is going to be a week where people's destinies and lives are going to be transformed. And the Lord spoke to me that as we come into this revival week, Destinies and lives shall be restored. And God is going to start with you. In Jesus' name. So I'm Apostle Peter Seme from Kampala, Uganda. I'm married and uh, I'm blessed with three children. And I pastor a church called River City Church. It's a blessing to be here. So for that reason, you can take forth your seat. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a better amen. Uh, very quickly, because of the interest of time... This morning, I want to talk to somebody. And then second service, we shall take it to the next level. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you're a good God. We thank you for your word. May your word be established in our lives. And I pray that as your word come forth, you will speak to our hearts. You will reveal yourself that your name may be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, I am speaking on the six ways to connect to God's supply. Six ways to connect to God's supply. I want to begin by saying that in the kingdom of God, there are dimensions, there are things that you need to do to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. You need to allow God to give you a certain kind of revelation that will help you to, to enjoy God's supply in your life. There's getting born again, but there's another thing, enjoying the benefits of you being born again. There are people who are in church for 10 years, 20 years, but their lives have never changed because they have not gotten into a certain revelation 
to enjoy God's supply. My prayer for you this morning is that God will give you grace from today to begin to enjoy every single supply that God has done for your life. Somebody shout a better amen. Very quickly, we are going to the book of Philip, Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 verses number 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs. Paul will enter into a certain kind of revelation that he had to operate and to enjoy the supply of God. So he was assuring the people that this God that I've encountered, this God that I've been serving, there's something about him. is a God who supplies the need. My friend, you can be in church for many years, but if you don't understand kingdom principles, you are going to be in church, yet your life can never improve or prove anything in life. So this morning, I want to encourage you that as you connect to God's supply, may this season be a season of God's supply in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, if we talk about God's supply, I want to, I want to show you some of the ways that you need to connect to God's supply. And the way number one, if you must connect to God's supply, you need to be a kingdom seeker. Be a kingdom seeker. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33, Matthew 6, 33, you have to be, a, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom. So when you are seek first the kingdom, the Bible says, and with this righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. Until you have a mentality of the kingdom, until you have a mentality of doing the work of God, you are not able to enjoy God's supply. God's supply comes to people who are kingdom minded. People who know what to do. You are in church not to add numbers. You are in the church to benefit the work of God. And as you benefit the work of God, God also is going to benefit you. So as you seek first the kingdom, then God will take over into your supply. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things, the money, the job, the wife, the husband, all the supply that you need is going to come into your life. So the first kingdom benefits that you need to enjoy is divine supply. And divine supply comes when we seek first the kingdom of God. There's a dimension you have to reach whereby you don't seek things to benefit you, but you seek things to benefit the kingdom of God. So if you are kingdom minded, you are going to enjoy kingdom supply. Kingdom supply comes to them that are kingdom minded. God will not bless you because you speak good English. God will not bless you because you are too educated. But God will bless you because your mind is of the kingdom. So you need to connect to kingdom. You need to have a kingdom mindset to enjoy kingdom supply. Kingdom supply comes to people who are fully devoted into kingdom things. That's why as a, as a son in this ministry, as a daughter in this ministry, you need to devote yourself into the work of God in this ministry. So as you are serving God, the grace of God that is upon this house must operate upon your life. So let's be kingdom minded. Seek first the kingdom. Then all these things is going to be added unto you. I pray for you this morning. May God supply all your needs. In Jesus mighty name. Then point number two. If you must enjoy God's supply, invest in the kingdom. Invest in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 21. Invest in the kingdom. The Bible says, do not, let for, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on heart. Don't lay up your, yourself on treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven. Where neither moth or rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. You hear that? Where your treasure is, your heart also be there. So if you invest in the kingdom, so because you're investing in the kingdom, that is where your treasure is. 
So where you put your money matters. Where you put your things matters. Where you invest matters a lot. Where you invest, that's where your heart is. And where your heart is, that's where your supply is going to come. I want to submit to you that as long as you are supporting this ministry, as long as you are standing with the work of God in this ministry, the, 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 the anointing and the grace on this altar will also supply your need. Because where your, treasure, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. The Bible said, don't lay treasures on the, for yourself on the things of the earth, but lay the treasure over things of the heaven. And the Bible says, where your heart is, there your treasure also is. So as you pay your tithe in this church, as you support the work of God, then all the blessing that God has ordained in this ministry will flow into your life. In the things of God, there's no shortcut. God does not pay salaries, but God gives reward. Everything you are doing for the kingdom, there's a reward for you. So you need to do it with all your might. Invest in the kingdom of God. Invest your time. Invest your finances. Invest your energy. Invest your, your commitment. Everything that God will do for you, it is until you invest in the kingdom of God, then you will provoke supernatural supply to come into your life. This morning, I pray for you that whatever you have been doing for the kingdom, may God reward it for you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. Then point number three. If you must connect to God's supply, you need to connect with the grace of God upon your spiritual father. Connect with the grace of God upon your spiritual father. There are certain blessings, there are certain breakthroughs you are not going to get by prayer and fasting. But you are going to get by connecting with the grace of God upon your man of God. Your man of God carries the keys for your supply because he is the one that God has ordained for your life. He is the one that God has ordained for your future. He is the one that God has ordained for your destiny. So as you connect with the grace of God upon your spiritual father, you cannot remain the same. We thank God for the grace of God upon uh, Bishop Bugwa. He's a graced man of God. So as you connect with that grace, you cannot remain the same. You know, a lion produces a lion. And the dog produces a dog. So when you're seated under a lion like him, you cannot fail to become a lion. You know, when you, the, the anointing you submit under determines what you're going to become in life. You cannot be pastored by a lion and, and you become a frog. A lion produces a lion. How many lions are in the house? Hey, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I am a lion because my father is a lion. Your father cannot be blessed and you become broke. It is an error. Your father cannot be driving and you're on Futubishi. It's an error. You need to connect to the grace upon your father. And one of the ways to connect with him is by, by being a blessing to his life. Is by submitting fully to him and also to listen to his rebuke. What he tells you to do, do it. There are people, the moment they give you a small rebuke, when your father gives you a small rebuke, you will disappear in the church for three weeks. You are not a son. You are a goat in the church. You know, in, in, in church, we have two types of members. We have the goat and the sheep. I teach about that all the time. A sheep will always hear the voice of the shepherd. How many people you have ever seen? Where a sheep is, sheep are always very loyal. They move in the same line. When the shepherd is shepherding the sheep, they always move in the same line. But a goat, me, I have ever read a goat in the village. A goat, when you are trying to pull it, is also pulling you. Meh, meh. You are, you are pulling and he's also pulling you. A goat is one of the most rebellious animals I've never seen. A goat does not pay tithe. A goat does not fast. A goat does not come to, to church on time. When the service, the, service come at, uh, the service begins at 10, it will come at 12. A goat is very disobedient. Ask your neighbor, are you a goat or you are a sheep? Ask him for me. Uh, if your neighbor is not asking, he's a suspect. <laughs> it is my prayer that God will raise you to become a kingdom-minded person by connecting with the grace of God upon your father. There are no goats here. All of us, we are sheep. But if you are a goat, may God deliver you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. So tell your neighbor, connect with the grace upon your father. 
So if you connect the grace upon your father, you, you know, you learn to duplicate what your father does. If your father is a giver, you also be a giver. You know, one of the things that shows you are a son is by doing what your father does. You are not doing things that are contrary to him. You are doing what he does because he's your father. You have the DNA from him. I mean, you are, you are part of his life. You, 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 you tap from him. You drink from him. So if you are doing things that are contrary to what your father does, you are not a son. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? If I am a father, where is my honor? You see, the honor you give to your father determines the blessing is going to release upon your life. The honor you give to your father determines what he's going to do into your life. Let me tell you, what you do to your man of God, it makes your man of God sleepless. Because all the time, he thinks about you. Because you are part of his life. You need to be a son that does not just come to church by your honor what your father carries. Don't be a mediocre in the church. A mediocre son, an opportunist. Be a son that when people look at you, they, they, they say, wow, this is the son of Bishop Bogwa. Because you have a duplicate of him in you. Even when you are preaching, they see him in you. When you are walking, they see him in you. I mean, you are a son in the house. David, one time Saul asked David, whose son are you? After David conquering the, the Philistine, the, 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 the Goliath. Saul asked him, whose son are you? He did not say, you know, you see, in, he said, I am a son of Jesse the Bethlehem. I know my father. He was very clear. I'm a son of Jesse. Some, some people in the ask, who is your father? When I'm in Carola, my father is Bishop Bugwa. When I go to the other side of Kakamega, my father, you become a confuser of the confused. You need to be identified with your father. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, this week, I will connect with the grace. Learn to be a blessing to your father. Take him out for holidays. Let him eat chips and chicken together with the mama. How many people here you have ever even bought a shoes for mama? Shoes. As your mama. Let's not talk about shoes. A blouse. How many people have ever done that? You cannot see God's supply until you learn to be a blessing to your parents. Somebody say amen. They don't need your money, but you need the grace upon their life. Because they are blessed. So it is, you need to tap from them. So learn to do things that will change their lives. That will be a blessing to them. So as they pray for you, the grace shall be released upon your life. You know when you bless a man of God, when your father is happy with you, even when he's sleeping, he's praying for you. All the time. This week I, I declare, may God change your mentality. May God make you a true son. Lift your hands and shout a better hallelujah. Then number four. If you must connect to God's supply, you need to work for the kingdom. Work for the kingdom. John chapter 9 verse 4. Work for the kingdom. John chapter 9 verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. For the night is coming when no man can work. I must work while it is still day. I must work while, while I still have energy. I must work while, while I'm still alive. Because time will come where you, you, have no, you cannot work again. So whatever you are doing for the kingdom, you must do it now. Don't wait and don't postpone things. Whatever you want to do for the work of God, do it now. If to pray, pray now. If to fast, fast now. If to give, give now. Everything you are doing for the kingdom, do it while it is still day. Because night will come when you cannot work. A time is going to come when you are, when you are 80 years, the bones are now weak. You can't jump like now you are jumping when you are 37 years. You need to work now. Whatever you are doing for God, do it now. Don't, don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. Because night cometh where no one works. So everything you are doing for God, do now. Use all your ability to make sure that the work of God is going to another level. Don't just be a member who is adding numbers in the church. 
you will be a disgrace to, even to God himself. Because God created you to serve him. He created you to be, to, do, to be a blessing to people. So as you join, as you are in this church, make sure that you are fully working for the kingdom of God. Look for opportunities, what you can do in the house of God. Don't just come and fold your hands. You say, me, me I'm, I'm not called for this. I'm not called for that. I am not called. God has called you because you're a child of God. So you need to discover your ability, what you can do, and work tirelessly for the kingdom of God. There's nobody who has worked for the kingdom and their lives remain the same. Everybody that works for the kingdom, God gives them the benefits of supernatural supply. I decree this morning, may God increase your kingdom life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up hands and shout a better hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I will work while it is still day. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it now. Tomorrow will never come. If you are working for God, work now. Work now. Work now. There's no time. Point number, number five. If you must enjoy God's supply, you need to defend the kingdom. Defend the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 37 verses 35. You have to defend the kingdom. Don't take the work of God for granted. The Bible says, "For I will defend this city. I will defend this city. He, he said, I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant's sake. Do you hear that? I will defend this city. I will defend this city. In other words, he's saying, I will defend what, I, what is given to me. I will defend my kingdom before, for my servant's sake. You are, the, you are, you are, the, you are God's servant. So God says he will defend what he, has, he, what he has put in you. He will not allow it to be destroyed. He will not allow the city. He will not allow Karula to be destroyed. That's why he has sent Bishop Mbugwa in this place. Somebody say a better amen. So as you, are, as you are working for the kingdom, defend the kingdom. Anything you hear which is contrary to what God is saying, don't listen to it. If you hear anybody talks evil about your pastor, my friend, give them blows without apology. Because they don't know where your pastor picked you from. Some of you came here when you didn't have shoes. Now you have shoes. Others you came here when you are smelling. Now you are smelling well. Others you came here even walking. You didn't have any walking style. Now you can walk well. You came, you didn't even know how to say, how are you in the church? Now you can gather the English and you speak. Then nobody can just come from nowhere to try to divide what, where, where, where you are drinking from. Defend the kingdom with all your strength. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'll defend my church with all my life. Defend your church. If somebody tries to talk bad about your church, be the first one to be at the gate to confront them. You talk about my pastor, I deal with you. You talk about, you know, there are some people who claim to be members of the church, yet they are not members. Others come as spies. Others, they claim they are with, they are with us and they are not with us. And there are people who have been in church for 10 years. They don't leave the church, but yet they chase people from the church. I used to have a member like that. In the church, she will speak evil. When the new people come to I say, you, you, you've come to join here. Uh, uh, forget about this church. Me, I'm just here because I have nowhere to go. So he will chase away people, but will never go. One time I pray, I say, God, this one, remove her from this place. God chased her away. So if you're not defending the kingdom, the Lord will deal with you. Somebody say better, amen. amen. Learn to defend the kingdom. Don't be among the gossipers in the church. Don't be among the, the people that bring division and rebellion in the church. Be among, be, just love God with all your heart and serve God with all your strength. Defend the work of God. Don't divide the church. Don't divide the, 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 the ministry. There are people who come to join the worship team. The worship team is running very well. The moment they join the worship team, division begins. They carry the spirit of division. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. Lift your hands and shout, I must defend my church. I must defend the kingdom. No matter what it takes, no matter what it costs, I will defend the kingdom. Yeah. Point number six. Win souls for the kingdom. Win souls for the kingdom. How many people do you bring in, in a church? 
as a believer, as a member of the church. You need to win souls in the kingdom. Don't just come to church every Sunday you're coming alone. Make sure you bring someone in the church. Benefit the kingdom of God by winning a soul. When you come to church, tell somebody about uh, Jesus' outreach ministry. Tell somebody about your church. Bring somebody in the kingdom. Bring them to the church. If you win a soul in the kingdom, one soul, the Bible says the whole of heaven rejoices. So as you win souls in the kingdom, there are benefits for you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 verses 30. Proverbs 11 30. The Bible declares the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life and he who wins souls is wise. You must be a soul winner in order for you to enjoy God's supply. Because there's no way you can bring a soul in the kingdom and God fails to take care of your affairs. Every, every person you bring in the church, when you bring one soul in the church and that soul is transformed in the heaven, your supply is evident. And God records every member you bring in church. So don't just be a member who come to church and you are just coming alone. Learn to benefit the kingdom of God by winning souls. Bring people to church. Bring somebody to church. When that person is blessed, then you shall go to the next level. Lift your hands and say, from today, I will be a soul winner. Shout loud and say, from today, I will be a soul winner. May God give you, give you grace to win souls. I say, may the Lord give you grace to bring the souls in the kingdom. At least every month, try to bring at least one person in church. At least one. Every month. If all of us here bring one, one person in church every month, within, within six months, we have overflow here to outside, to the other side. Even Bishop will decide to break the church very soon. By the way, this church very soon is going to be broken. I see expansion coming in the name of Jesus. The kingdom must expand and go to the next level. Somebody shout a better hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, be a soul winner. Stop wasting time. Win souls in the kingdom. Be a blessing to somebody. Transform a life of somebody. Then God will take you to the next level. Then very quickly, I'm going to give you signs of God's supply. Signs. Something to show that surely I am operating in God's supply. Number one, the first sign that you're operating in God's supply is blessings without sorrow. Blessings without sorrow. Sorrow. There are dimensions of blessing you begin to enjoy when you, when, when you begin to operate in God's supply. You begin to enjoy certain blessings that are strange in your life. There are certain breakthroughs that begin to come forth. There are certain connections begin to open up. There are certain blessings that begins to come the moment you begin to enjoy God's supply. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 verses 22. Proverbs 10, 22. The Bible says... The blessings of the Lord make one rich and adds no sorrow with it. Listen, there are blessings that God gives and that, that blessing is the blessing that adds no sorrow. And the blessing that adds no sorrow, that's the supernatural blessing from God. So every time when you are operating in supernatural supply, the blessing of God begins to increase upon your life. The blessing begins to take you to the next level. My prayer for you in this church, that as you come here, as you serve the work of God here, may God increase the blessings upon your life. You shall never be broke one more time in your life. You shall walk in the blessing. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. You need the blessing of supernatural supply. The blessing with no sorrow. Any blessing that gives you sorrow is not a blessing. You must enjoy the blessing with no sorrow. No wonder the Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, no stand in the ways of sinners, no sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he shall meditate day and night. He shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit is in all season. And whatever he does shall prosper. May you prosper this year. I say may you prosper this year. May God increase the blessing in your family. May God increase the blessing in your ministry. Lift up hands and shout, I am blessed. Shout, I am blessed. You need a blessing without no sorrow. That whatever you shall do, it shall prosper. You shall be as a tree planted 
A man who is planted like a tree is an, an, is an approachable. You cannot approach it. You can't remove him out of the blessing. Because you are standing by the riverside. You become like a tree planted that when the season comes, you flourish. You prosper. This year, I decree, may God prosper you and may you flourish in every area of your life. If you are doing business, may God bless your business. If you are doing, uh, if you are doing a certain kind of job, may God bless your job. May God take you to the next level. Where people are lacking, you shall enjoy the blessing. Where people are giving up, the Lord shall supply your needs. Lift your hands and shout a better amen. No wonder Paul says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. My friend, I pray for you that in this season, may the riches of God be evident in your life. <laughs> Somebody shout a better amen. Lift up your two hands and say, in the name of Jesus, I receive the blessing without sorrow. You need that kind of a blessing whereby nobody will say, I am the one who did it for him. You know, when people do it for you, they'll begin to brag. They'll begin to say, if it was not of me, it would not be there. If it was not of me, it would have not succeeded. But when God does, it is evident that this blessing is from the Lord. One blessing from the Lord can silence all the poverty in your, in your clan. I pray for you this week. May God bless you beyond human imagination. May God supply your need according to his riches. I decree and declare between now and the end of this year. When God is looking for whom to bless, it will start with your family. I say it will start with your life. Lift your hands and shout a better hallelujah. Tell your neighbor this week, I need the blessing without sorrow. I don't want to preach this morning. I'm preserving my energy for the service. Somebody shout a better amen. Number two. The second sign of God's supply is supernatural protection. Supernatural protection. Psalms 121 verse 7. Psalms 121 verses number 7. The Bible says, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He will preserve you from all evil. Evil. My friend, the signs of, super, of, of God's supply is that you walk in supernatural protection whereby there's no evil, there's no poverty, there's no lack that can come near your life. The law will always preserve you from every evil. Whatever tries to attack you, God defends you. Whatever tries to talk evil about you, God protects you. Whatever tries to stand on your way, God begins to work on your life. A man who is operating in supernatural supply, God preserves that man. He gives him supernatural protection. May God protect you from every evil. Anybody planning evil at your place of work, anyone planning evil in your business, anyone planning evil in your family, I decree supernatural protection. May God protect you in the morning. May God protect you in the afternoon. And may God protect you in the evening. Lift your hands and shout, I receive protection. Mm. You need protection in your life. Supernatural protection. Psalms 46 verse 1. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. He is our refuge. The word refuge means is our protection. He keeps us. He protects us. He is our protection and our strength. And a very present help. In times of trouble. My friend, when you have the supernatural protection, when you have the backing of God upon your life, uh, your protection is evident. I want to declare this morning that there's no evil that shall come upon your life. No wonder Psalms 91 from verses 1. The Bible says that he that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him alone will I trust. That. The Bible says that my, 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 I shall serve the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him alone will I trust. In him alone. Will I do what? Will I trust. Listen, 2022, believe God to preserve your life. 
and he says, surely it shall deliver you from the snare of the faller and from the noisome pestilence. Listen, this week, any noisome pestilence, anything that is trying to give you no peace, the Lord is going to deliver you from them. It shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His tool shall be your shield and your bakala. Oh, Kabadaya. And the Bible says in verses number 5, you shall, you shall not be afraid of the terror by the night. No, for the arrow that flies by the day. Oh, verse 6. Uh, no, of the pestilence that walk in darkness. No, the destruction that lays waste at noon. And verse number 7 says, uh, A thousand may come at your side. Uh, and ten thousand at your right hand. Uh, and shall not come near you. And verse 8 says, uh, And only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked and verses 9 say because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place and he says in verses 10 that no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling and verses 11 says uh, for he shall give his angel charge over you I declare this morning every place you enter may God give you charge, angel charge over you in the mighty name of Jesus and he shall keep in all your ways and verses 12 says in their hand they shall bear up they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and verses 13 says uh, you shall tread upon the lions and the cobra the young lion and the serpent they shall not trample under foot uh, and verses 14 says uh, because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him and the bible says I will set him on high Mark will tell you about this week uh, God is going to set me on high and he said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. And I'll set him on high because he has known my name. Makadiboa. Verses 15 says, he shall call upon me. And I will answer him. And I'll be with him in trouble. And he says, I will deliver and honor him. Somebody is about to be honored this morning. I don't know what has been frustrating you. I don't know what has been fighting you. But because you are in the kingdom of God, the Lord shall honor you. And verse 16 says, uh, with long life, uh, I'll satisfy him uh, and I'll show him my salvation. Uh, I declare this morning, uh, may God satisfy your family with long life. Uh, may God satisfy your children with long life. Uh, may God satisfy your business uh, with long life. Uh, everywhere you go, the Lord will satisfy your life. Uh, lift your hands and shout a better hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to walk in supernatural protection. <laughs> Verses, I mean, point number, number three. The signs of supernatural supply is good health. Good health. Third John 1, 2. Third John 1, 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Somebody say all things. Uh, I don't hear shout and say in all things. Not some things, not part of the things. The Bible says, I wish that you may prosper in all things. It is an error to be having money and you're sick in your body. It's an error to be working, but you have nothing to show. That is not God's supply. God's supply comes with good health. It comes with good health. It comes with all things. The Bible says that you, you may be in health. Just as your soul prospers. 2022, determined to live in good health all the days of your life. Don't allow the devil to begin stealing your joy, steal your peace, steal your health all the time you're in the hospital. I declare this morning, nobody in your family members, nobody that's part of your life that's going to be sick, that's going to die useless, all of you, you shall live in good health. Lift your hands and shout, I am the one. Can I hear you shout and say, I am the one. Tell your neighbor this year, I am going to live in good health. From January to December, the Lord will make you live in good health. No sickness in your body. No pain in your body. You shall live well. I say you shall sleep well. You shall enjoy this life. Everywhere you go this week, I declare, the hand of God is upon you. The grace of God is upon you. 
the shield of God is upon you. You are God's refuge. You are God's dwelling place. You are God's hiding place. No weapon fashioned against you that shall be able to prosper. May God protect you. May God keep you in good health. Lift your hands and shout a better hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. This morning, how many people are saying, I must walk in God's supply. I am tired of this kind of life. You must walk in God's supply. Walk in abundance. Walk in abundance. Good life. Nice life. Jesus said the thief comes but to steal. John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes but to steal. And to, but I came that you may have life. And have it in abundance. So abundant life is my portion. I am not supposed to live in less. I'm not supposed to be a beggar as a believer. Let me tell you, you are not a beggar. You are a believer must walk in abundance. He must walk in supply. How can we be serving God at the same time we are beggars? What kind of God are we serving? You are serving God at the same time. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are broke. You come to church, even you cannot give an offering. The devil is a liar. After today, I prophesy, may God give you supernatural supply. Walk in supply from today until December. Walk in supply in every area of your life. Lift your hands and shout, I'm going to walk in the supernatural supply. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Write this one as we finish. Signs of supernatural supplies. Open doors. Someone say open doors. You know when you're walking with supernatural supply, doors open supernaturally. <laughs> doors just open up. Doors does what? It opens up. You cannot walk in supernatural supply and be in the same spot. Supernatural supply comes with open doors. One of the ways that God is going to bless you is when doors are open for you. My friend, if doors are closed for you, you will die in poverty. Every man needs open door for supernatural supply. Because doors are channels that God uses for us to be blessed. If you don't have a door, you can never be blessed in life. God uses doors. He uses people to be a blessing to people. There are people who say, me, I, don't, I hate people these days. I don't have any friend. If you don't have any friend, you'll die alone. People are doors. When God gives you one person who is good in your life, be behind that person, there are more men. So, open doors. Those are signs that God is going to give you supernatural supply. Somebody say hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you need to open doors. Can I hear somebody talking? That they say you need to open doors. I declare this morning, may God give you open doors. May doors open in this Kenya for you. May God do those open nations for you. You are not going to be stagnant in life. You will enjoy the benefits of open doors. I decree and declare this morning to every worker here, to every businesswoman here, to anybody in this place, may God open for you doors. Doors that nobody can close. Doors that no devil can close. I decree and declare the month of March, let doors open for you. Lift your hands and shout, I need open doors. Oh, come on, talk to somebody. Come on, turn to three people. Tell them this week, doors are opening for you. Yeah, they are opening. My friend, when doors open, supply is evident. When doors open, you enjoy the blessing of supernatural supply. But if you don't have doors, my friend, you'll be in the same place forever and ever. But when doors begin to open, supplies begin to come in. Somebody shout a better amen. As I finish, I declare that between now until the 31st of December, may doors open for you every month. May my April door open for you. In May, doors will open. In September, doors will open. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, come on, look for three people and tell them this week, uh, I will walk in open doors. I will walk in God's supply. In the name of Jesus, uh, January, February, until December, may God supply your needs. Uh, may God supply everything that you desire. You shall not be broke in your life. Uh, you shall not beg in your life. Uh, the law will provide. Uh, it will do exceedingly abundantly. Above all you may ask or even think, uh, according to the power that work inside of you, you shall not borrow, but you shall lend to nation. You shall not lack in your family. 
You shall not lack in your business. You shall not lack in your marriage. The Lord shall meet your, your life. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Say, Lord, give me supernatural supply. Give me supply from today. Give me supply in October. Give me supply in April. Receive the supply. I say receive the supply. I say receive the supply. In the name of Jesus. As I close, I want to encourage you. This week, position yourself for, a, a, for supernatural supply. Don't allow this month to leave you in want and poverty. Believe God that this month, it has just started. The month of April, I must enjoy God's supply. My children will never lack anything. My husband, my wife, no poverty, no lack in my house. If God is supplying needs, meeting people's needs, it should begin with your family. I want to declare to you, we don't serve Jehovah Brock. We serve Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. When he makes a way for you, nobody can close that way. This morning, I declare the blessing is coming to you. I say the blessing is coming to you. You will walk in supply. You will walk in abundance. You will walk in testimonies. You will walk in breakthroughs. You will walk in open doors. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that favor in the name of Jesus. I declare this week, every place you enter, the Lord will make a way for you. The Lord will open doors for you. The Lord will take you to the next level. The Lord will change your identity. The Lord will change your life. Stand up and shout, yes. better don't miss these three days. Something is about to happen. There's going to be a supernatural supply coming in your life. You know, we are looking at a time whereby when you come to church, you are coming with the, with the dollars in your pocket. That's what I'm talking about. You become loaded. When you're giving offerings, you don't give one five, 50 bob. You get out of the level of 50 bob. You get, I mean, you are operating supernatural supply. You are investing in the kingdom. You are giving God the best. It is, it is, it is, it, 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 it's, it's not good for a believer. You come to church. When people are giving offering, you are looking. God must give us supernatural supply. And I pray that God will give you supernatural supply that you shall become the biggest tither in this church. That you give the biggest. I told God in my church I want to be the biggest tither. Nobody can give more than me. Bishop, me, I, I declare nobody can give. Listen, if you are giving to church, it's not for the benefit for the church, it's for your benefit. Anything you are giving to God is not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. So giving is not a privilege, but it's, I mean, it's not a right, but it's a privilege for you to give because God has blessed you. The same God who gave to you can remove it from you. So you need to invest in the kingdom with all your heart. And God is going to bless your life. Somebody shout a better amen. Tell your neighbor, walk in, 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 a, in God's supply. Tell him, tell him, tell him, walk in God's supply. Bishop, this church is a blessed church. And as I'm seeing people here, I'm seeing millionaires. Uh, I, 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 let me talk to people this side. Maybe this side. Not. I say I am seeing millionaires in the house. I say I'm seeing millionaires in the house. May God make you the richest in your family. May God make you the wealthiest in your father's house. As you walk in kingdom principle, may God meet your desire. As you walk in kingdom agenda, may God meet your need. Lift your hands and shout, I am the one. Hey. I want to challenge all of us here that in this season, let's be a blessing to our man of God. Some, some people, their blessings have been delayed and tied because they have not learned to be a blessing to, to the man of God. They, they take their man of God for granted. You know, th there's one time I saw, I, I saw Bishop in aeroplane. Bishop, you, 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 you wrote, I'm going for holiday. I was so happy. He was going for holiday just to, to with the mama and the children. I love that. That is powerful. Somebody say hallelujah. Tell your neighbor we must make our parents happy. Tell him them. Say I must make my parents happy. As your father flies, so shall you fly. 
I say, as your father flies, so shall you fly. As your father goes very far, so will you go very far. You are not ordinary. You are the DNA of this ministry. Therefore, the blessing upon this house must go with you. As God increases your man of God, may God also increase you. May God, as God is raising others, may God raise you. Lift your hands and shout, Oh God, I need supernatural supply. I need God's supply in my life. Somebody clap your hands to the Holy Ghost. We are going to pray this prayer as I finish. Say in the name of Jesus, by the power of the word of God, by the power of the word, from today, I will walk in supernatural supply. Now lift your voice and pray that prayer. By the power of the word of God, I will walk in supernatural supply. I will not be broke one more day in my life. I will not be poor one more day in my life. I will walk in the supernatural supply. Supply in the morning, supply in the evening, supply in the afternoon. Lord, make me to walk in the supernatural supply. The month of April is the month of supernatural supply. God must supply your need. God must open doors. God must take you to the next level. Oh, shaka padekezika, li praka zekada. I declare supernatural supply, financial supply, business supply, projects, those to open up, breakthroughs and connections to open up in the name of Jesus the grace of God the anointing of God to work in our lives to work in our families to work in our business let there be a supernatural supply in the mighty name of Jesus someone declare declare this is my month this is my week of supernatural supply I will walk in the supply I will walk in enough blessing I will not be broke I refuse to lack I refuse to slack my God shall supply all my needs uh, according to his riches uh, in glory in Christ Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus uh, I receive uh, a supernatural supply in the morning uh, in the afternoon uh, in the evening uh, we shall walk uh, in the supernatural supply in the name of Jesus uh, I release uh, the blessing uh, upon your family I release uh, the blessing uh, upon your finances uh, I release uh, the blessing uh, upon your marriage uh, I release uh, the blessing upon your worker in the name of Jesus father we bless you we worship you oh God because from today we will walk in the supernatural supply we shall never lack anything we shall never want anything we shall never be broke we shall never lack the Lord shall supply all our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus somebody clap your hands to the Holy Spirit Clap your hands as you thank him. Clap your hands as you glorify him. Clap your hands as you lift him on high. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Supernatural supply. There's a grace of God upon uh, Mama and Bishop, uh, Bishop Bugwa. There's a very high grace upon their lives. And uh, as I was praying, the Holy Spirit just told me that... Uh, we should be a blessing to them. Somebody to be a, say, say a blessing to them. You know, every place I go to preach, one of the, the reasons why men of God give me their big platform to minister is that every time when people, I tell them to, to connect with their man of God, they see strange things happen in their lives. Doors open for them. Let me tell you, some of the, you know, some blessings have been delayed in your life because you have not valued what your man of God carries. You have not been a blessing to his life as a person. You need to connect with him as a person. And the ways you can connect to him is by giving to him. Praise the name of Jesus. So on Wednesday, we are going to be a blessing to, 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 to them. Praise the name of Jesus. I mean Tuesday, not Wednesday, Tuesday. We are finishing on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we are going to be a blessing to them. How many people say it is good? Do you love it? Do you love your man of God? Do you believe in the grace of God upon his life? Can I hear you? Do you believe in the grace of God upon his life? So as you connect with the grace upon his life, actually I want us to believe God and take our man of God for holidays. How many people say that? It's good. We take them for holidays. We take mama, we take bishop for holidays outside. Is it a good thing? Uh, I don't hear you. I'm only hearing the other man. God bless you, sir. May God, may, God, may God meet you. May God change your life. In Jesus' mighty name. 
this man is very aggressive. Any challenge that he has, God will deliver him. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a better amen. Now listen. Listen. I'm, I'm going to give you an envelope. And then on, when, on, on Tuesday, sorry, on Tuesday, the day when we are finishing the revival, we want a bishop together with mama and I, we shall release the blessing upon your life. So that as you connect with the grace upon their lives, you will shoot to the next level. The strange doors and, and, and strange breakthroughs will open up for you. Am I communicating? Lift your hands and shout from today. I connect with the grace upon my parents. As they go for holidays and serve God and enjoy, my life will not remain the same. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Please, can, can I have some... Just in one minute, can I, can I have some envelopes there, please? Some envelopes. I want to give to people here so that uh, we be a blessing to our pastor. I want to see how many people love Bishop today. This is not a tithe. It's not an offering. Put for me here. Just put for me here. God bless you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? Tell your neighbor in this month of April, I must be a blessing to my father. I must be a blessing to my church. I must walk in supernatural supply. You know, you have heard the message. I don't need to repeat myself. So you just need to connect. You need to connect. God bless you. Hallelujah. This is what we are going to do. I, I want you from, according to your level, according to your level, as you come here, you confess, this is what I'm going to do for my man of God. Coming from your heart, from my man of God, this is what I'm going to do. Are we together? I'm going to begin from this side. Let's come, let's come, let's come, let's come. Come. Uh-huh. Just speak it out. Others will clap. Uh-huh. 5,000. God bless you. Clap for her. Clap for her. Uh-huh. Man of God. From your heart. Uh-huh. 4,000. Clap. Clap for him. Clap for him. Come, 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 come. Just come. Just, just do that. All of us. I want us to be according to your level and, and how you feel that I want real to, to bless my father. Uh -huh. 5,000. God bless you. Let's clap for them. Uh -huh. eh? It's okay. It's okay. Is he okay? Seven, seven. He's giving 7,000 three times. Four times. He's saying 7,777. So God, that's what the God spoke to him. Let's clap for him. God bless you. Uh-huh. 3,000. Let's clap for him. Just come. Just come and tell us. Very fast because of time. Just come. All of us. I want all of us to be a blessing to our pastor. All of us. Just come. You tell me what you can do. All of us. It's not some people. Uh -huh. 2,000. God bless you. God bless you. Come. Just come. All of us. Come. 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 1,000. God bless you. Come. 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 All of us. Come. Uh-huh. Uh, because he has said 1,000, so all of you now you're saying 1,000. Clap for, for him, clap for him. <laughs> uh -huh. 1,000, God bless you. Uh -huh. 1,000, God bless you. 1,500, cl just clap for her. Uh -huh. 2,000, God bless you. 1,000, God bless you. 3,000, God bless you. Let's clap for them. 1,5, uh -huh. God bless you. Uh -huh. 1,000, God bless you. One, God bless you. Uh huh. One thousand. God bless you. One thousand. God bless you. Twelve hundred. God bless you. Uh huh. Two thousand. God bless you. Let's clap for them. Four thousand. God bless you. Three thousand. God bless you. Four thousand. God bless you. Uh huh. One thousand. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Any other person? If you are coming, let's come quickly. All of us look for on, on Tuesday, we must do that, and God will bless us. Huh? Him and the wife, 10,000. Clap for them. Uh huh. Any other person? Any other person? Any other person before we finish? Are we, have we all got? Have we all got? Uh huh. You have returned. Okay. 
maybe you can put there. Go, I pray for you. Father, I pray for this gentleman. I pray that you may bless him. Open doors for him. Take him to the next level. I declare that he will walk in God's supply. He will never be broke, neither shall he lack. But the blessing will overflow and overtake you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's get in our offerings. Let's get in our offerings in the name of Jesus. Just pick up your offering in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is he that giveth than he that receiveth. Every time when you give to us the work of God, you are provoking God's supply. The Bible says when we pay our tithe, when we give offerings, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be added unto our bosom. You can, if you have your tithe, you can give in your, you can pay your tithe. Take the envelope, your offering, and God is going to bless. I don't know how it is done here, Bishop. Just like that. Okay. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's do that quickly. And we pray. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to walk in God's supply. I'm going to walk in God's supply. Come on, come on. Just do that quickly, quickly, quickly. You're saying? Father, I speak a blessing upon this man. I declare he will walk in God's supply. This week, this month, you will never lack. May God meet your need. In the name of Jesus. In the days of poverty, you will triumph and win. In Jesus' name. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's, let's lift up our offerings, our tithe. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every giver this morning, you will open doors of God's supply in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall not be any lack. There shall not be any insufficiency. From today, I declare that financial blessing will increase in your life, will increase in your business in the mighty name of Jesus. Where there's lack, let there be abundance. Where there's poverty, let there be provision. I declare that this week, uh, the whole of this year, let there be supernatural supply in every area of your life. Father, we thank and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's come and we give in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. God bless you. Let's come and give. Let's come and give. We come, oh, come and give. Come and give. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that this week, let there be supernatural supply. May your business go to the next level. May your finances go to the next level. May God open doors. May God give you finances this week, this month, this year. In the name of Jesus, no more lack, no more poverty. May you walk in supernatural supply. May you walk in supernatural supply. As you give this morning, I declare the blessing of God is flowing in your life. Is flowing in your family, in your marriage, in your business. In the name of Jesus, I declare let there be supernatural supply this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands for Jesus. Breathe the Lord in a better way. Hallelujah. Thank you. We thank the Lord for that wonderful service.